Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you of Leela Chess ID 11019 against the Furial 10.88. The time control is fast and furious, 40 moves per 2 minutes with a 2 second increment. So this game is provided by David Grosvenor. We have d4 from Leela, knight f6. We go into the Nimzo Indian variation and here is the end of the opening book given to both of them. Leela plays bishop d3 here, so not committing a knight just yet. Black immediately doubles the pawns. In my book, d5 is far more popular here, actually. So what's the downside of doubling the pawns immediately? Let's see if there is any. So b6 here, which seems very logical, because white has lost a bit of control of the e4 square, so black's play seems very logical to try and control that central square a bit more. However, Leela plays now e4. This has a very surprising follow-up because if you check with most engines, the idea here would be usually f3. But Leela plays a stunning backdoor novelty move, which is not well estimated by engines. And the backdoor is provided by the form pawn is a major feature of this Nims of Indian secret backdoor. And this is really showing, this game highlights that maybe uh, Leela is going to be used by the Grandmasters and everyone basically for opening preparation pretty soon. Because these novelties provide a competitive advantage to other players, these deep-seated, far-sighted novelties. So here, E4, uh, we, we have the E4 target, but not supported by F3. Leela dares to play e5. So offering what seems to be like a rook sacrifice, or at least an exchange sacrifice. E takes f6. Now, does black dare to take here on h1? Black actually played g6 in this position. On bishop takes, then queen g4. We've seen this variation before, basically hits g7 and actually wins the queen basically. The queen's going to be won. This move is a bit desperate. The queen's actually trapped there. So that's just one sample. So basically here the dreaded form pawn uh, is kept. So black plays now after e takes. Black actually played g6 to that form pawn. Is it worth an exchange sacrifice? So queen g4 is played. So hitting that bishop. So if queen takes, we just take this bishop with a big advantage. So black takes that rook and says, exchange up. Thanks very much. And I don't know anything about form pawns. Isn't that just fantasy? Okay, well the form pawn, the cherished form pawn, is protected. And immediately, if I had two moves, you know, three moves, one, two, three, knockout, checkmate. So black plays actually d5, which is a struggle against the form pawn, because knight bd7 to try and hit it. Queen h4, knight d7, hitting that form pawn. So now if queen h6, this is at least enough for an even position. Just repetition would result. There's no other way for black to defend that knight there. However, Leela is not interested in that, taking that draw. No thanks. F3, trapping the bishop. We have now uh, e5, which is energetic. But actually, there's already, if Leela may be given more time, or if you put this through the, the strongest of engines, already there's a knockout blow here available for white, even in this position, after e5. Leela played in an accurate move, c takes. But there's a knockout blow. Can you spot it? You may have seen a previous video on this. If I give you five seconds to pause the video, what would you play here? Okay, bishop takes g6. Basically, checkmate next. If here, then f7 wins the queen. Thanks very much. And here, there's a big difference now with queen h6. Big difference to before. So knight takes f6. We go back with h4, and this is not the same as before because there's d takes e5 here. Look at this. So if, if uh, you know the rook moves, then there's bishop takes f6, absolutely winning. 
So bishop takes g6 is a clinical killing move. Lula plays c takes d5. E takes d4, c takes d4, and now c5 is played. D takes, black is trying to play very tactically now. After knight c5, trying to expose white's king perhaps. Bishop c4, so the queen's eyeing d4 from there. Bishop is now pinning that pawn. Uh, so this has very dangerous implications. If a check, for example, there might be bishop after the king moves bishop f7 in the air. Or queen h7, among other things. Uh, so we have knight e6. Okay, so this looks very scary already. Now bishop takes e6, eliminating that piece. Rook e8. If f takes here, then we're back to f7 check, winning the queen. So the idea was rook e8. Now white castles queenside, believe it or not. The rook gives natural support for the pawn to be pushed. Rook takes d5, supported by that rook. Uh, here, um, yeah, so queen d6 was played, which is looking like a really desperate move, basically. But uh, yeah, it, it is a pretty desperate state of affairs already, this position. So queen d6. D takes, queen takes c6, trying to get some counterplay against the white king. Queen a3 check doesn't do anything here. This position, for example, if uh, rook d8 check and e8, the king can come up to support queen b4, and that's the end of the checks. So we have uh, queen takes c6 check, queen takes e6, but now just queen e4, simplifying, white's a piece up. So hitting the rook, hitting the queen. We have queen takes, f takes. And black uh, makes an effort now not to allow bishop h6. So h6 was played. If bishop takes e4, trying to grab a center pawn, then bishop h6, this is a horrible sort of mating net that the black king is enclosed in. For example, here, rook d2. And the knight can improve the possession. This is just all over, really. It's just the bishop up. It's, there's no real defense to black losing queenside pawns eventually. So uh, uh, let's go back. So so uh, h6, bishop takes, bishop takes now. Knight h3, still with ideas of creating a kind of mating, mating net. Bishop f5, knight g5. So taking away escape squares of the king, the knight and bishop and the pawn, form pawn. Rook c8, rook e1, bishop d3. We have rook e7 hitting f7. Check, 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 king here. Uh, now we have check, king a4, check, king b3. Rook c8, having to scurry back to the back row because rook e8 is threatened. Uh, taking this pawn, and it's, it's hopeless for black. Bishop c4, and it was adjudicated as a win for white. Uh, so an example continuation where well, it's a piece up it's just trivial really it's a piece up white well, can basically play like this win b6 have a winning a pawn if nothing else even if f6 is lost there there's still the mating net now to consider with rook c8 if that stops it's only temporary because now there's rook e8 this is just going to be having to give up the rook now to stave off the mating net and white is just a rook up with winning pass pawn as well so Leela uncorks that novelty in the Nimza Indian. She's remembered that novelty she played from an earlier ID version. Wonderful secret Nimza Indian backdoor form pawn novelty. So Leela is finding lots of form pawn related chess innovations in the opening at the moment. Wonderful stuff. I hope you'll agree. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.